Chromatic Aberration is a great way to get your 2D and 3D graphics to have a little bit more photorealism and a little bit of life to it. So let's figure out how to achieve that inside of After Effects. Hey, what's up guys, Ryan here with Chomp. And the other day on Instagram, we posted some frames of a work in progress of some microscopic animations that we're working on and it had a chromatic aberration effect on it. And we actually got a question about how we achieved that on Instagram. And by the way, if you're not following us on Instagram, go ahead and you know hit that follow button over there and feel free to ask any questions that you might have. But let's go ahead and answer that question we got on Instagram and show you how we did it inside of After Effects. All right, so here we are inside of After Effects and let's just kind of see what the chromatic aberration is doing. So if you look, we're getting these nice little sort of lens effects, you know, our, our red, green and blue channels are offset and it's really just kind of adding to this um, molecule that we have in the middle of our frame. So if I just sold this really quick, let's kind of look at the effects that are going on real fast so you can see what it sort of looks like without any lens effects on top of it. As the first general effects, I do have some just levels and also, if you look from the render, we got a little bit of uh, noise that came in there. So I just did a little bit of noise reduction. And then I had a little bit of a dust. Let's get our background back in there really quick. Then I have a general color correction layer, add a little bit of depth of field. And these effects are just stacking on top of each other. A little bit of light streaks, added some grind. I'm going to skip this lens effect really quick. I'm just gonna turn all these back on for our, our last color adjustment layer. So this is what our molecule would look like without any of the lens effects and just uh, and with no chromatic aberration. So what I did for this is I use an effect called FD Lens Distortion. I use it on almost every project to get uh, chromatic aberration. So FD Lens Distortion is at aescripts.com and their suggested price is 24 bucks. You can give them a tip if you want, or if you'd like, you can just add zero dollars, add to the cart, and you're good to go. So let's jump back in After Effects. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on this adjustment layer and immediately you can kind of see the difference of what's happening and how we're getting those natural sort of lens distortions. This is definitely uh, exaggerated more than you would probably want, but we kind of like the look because it gave, a, it gave a little bit of that microscope look to it. So let me turn that on and off really quick. And what I did to also uh, sort of finish this off is I did another one on just the edges and this adjustment layer has a mask on it. And so adding it just to the edges kind of gives that little bit even more outside glow and chromatic effect. So let me zoom out. You can just take a look at what that looks like again. And let's jump into another example really quick that if for some reason you didn't want to get that plugin, uh, I'll show you how to set up your layers to be able to do an RGB split, which is kind of the same as chromatic aberration. Um, it's just, it takes a little bit more setup and doesn't seem as easy in my opinion. So I basically want all of these layers that don't have any of the color correction effect. This is kind of just our, our base render, no effects. And above this would be more of our effects, color grading, stuff like that. What we need to create is basically an RGB split. So I'm gonna take all these main layers and I'm gonna pre-comp them. We'll call this something like base render. And what we're gonna do is we need to extract red, green, and blue channels. So I'm gonna use the set channels effect. We want red, so I'm gonna turn off blue and green. All right, so let's get green. I duplicated the layer. I'm gonna turn off red and I'm turn on the green. And let's duplicate it once more because we still need blue. I'll turn that off and let's get the blue channel. So it's still not looking quite right, but what we're gonna do is select all these. Let's set the transfer mode to add. And now we're kind of back to where we started. So where we get the chromatic effect is by, you can you can do it two ways. You can either take this, you know, one of the layers and start to shift them over. And you can see how we're starting to kind of get our effect there. You can move them over a couple of pixels. Or the method that I prefer is just sort of scaling up each layer just a little bit. I mean, we're going 1% on these. Let's let's kind of see what the red looks like, kind of flaring that out a little bit. And, you know, maybe we'll drop the green up a little bit too. And I'm just scaling them just a little bit. So again, there you see, it's really prominent in these bright areas. We're getting our chromatic aberration effect again. And I'll go ahead and set the scale all these back to zero. 
you can kind of see the uh, difference of what we're getting there. So there's a look at how chromatic aberration can kind of help smooth out our motion graphics and animation and give a little bit more photorealism to them and kind of just bring it all together. So if you like that, feel free to leave a comment of anything else you uh, have a question for or want to see. And otherwise, we will see you in the next tutorial.